action. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a brand new MMA Roasted Podcast. It's me. I got Greg Romero Wilson with me. The Ween Dog is back. What's up, guys? Uh, What's up? I want to thank our sponsor, Speedweed. Listen, marijuana is legal in California. Get it delivered right to your house via Speedweed. Mention them at Speedweed. Tell them that you like the podcast at Speedweed. Speedweed.com. They're really good people. Uh, get it delivered right to you. You get hundred. You get ten dollars, ten percent off, hundred dollars or more. You buy that. So check them out. Gino's a really good guy. All right. Yeah, so, he is. He's really cool. Great guy. So what's going on? Um, I actually, my my wife and took my daughter to her family for the weekend. So I have had like four or five days alone. Oh wow. Okay, so. Uh, that's the best because that's when you can really romance the jerkin you know what i mean like yes. go through two three videos really get to where you want to be you know what i mean play the sound did you play the sound without headphones of did course you, like full on just oh that's the hell best. yeah of course uh, but it's weird because a lot of times like i'll, I'll know the people that like the porn stars so i feel that's like, even better yeah but i feel like it's some way like <laughs> For some reason, I feel like my wife would be okay with me jerking off people that I, I like didn't know, or like invite to comedy shows. Like if I know that the, <laughs> like I'm still talking to them and jerking off to them, there's still this guilt I have in my head. So it's that's a, that's a, like, you should you should yeah. yes. Well, I'm not trying to hook up with these people or like get with them. I'm just tell, I just happen to know them just from random comedy shows they've been to because. But I, but you also but you you've had sex with some of them. Back in the day, back in my heyday. A lot, a lot, so, oh. Right. And, and so the question, though, becomes okay, so when you're watching the video of someone you had sex with, are you jerking off to the video or are you jerking off to the memory of when you had sex with them? I, I don't jerk off to girls that I've had sex with for some reason. Like, most of the girls that I've had sex with that are porn stars are not in porn anymore. Like, they've graduated, they're like born again Christians now. Or, uh, right. no, they're yeah, exactly. no. <laughs> trying to make up for it. I mean, back when I was, you know, working at Night Calls, which was the job I had, I was the warm-up comic for the Playboy channel. It's the only job I've ever showed up early to in my life. And I'd be there talking to women, and there'd be like nine girls behind me fisting each other and scissoring and all this other stuff. And I'm like, hey, where are you from? To people who like don't want to be seen. And I'm blocking their view of the girls. It was like the best, worst job I've ever had in my entire life. Uh -huh. <laughs> What I do it again. I don't know. You also got to host. You were like some weird travel. You were some weird travel party host for Girls Gone Wild during the Girls Gone Wild heyday, weren't you? They they tested me out one time. I and it never actually made it to air. Um, and it was that was crazy. That was a crazy. They, they flew me to Toledo, and I would just interview girls. And at least like the porn stars were getting paid to do all this stuff. You know, the girls. Yeah, these girls, girls were just volunteering. Doing it for T-shirts. And I'll never forget, like, they wouldn't even, like, I was on the bus, but back in the other part of the bus where all, like, everything went down, I wasn't near there, you know? But I'll never forget there was a girl that was like, I might have been like 20, 22, 23, in the back of the bus, hooking up with another girl, like getting naked, and her phone was near me in the front of the bus, and her dad was calling. And I remember looking down at oh. the phone. <laughs> he can feel it. He was somewhere else. He was like, something, she, I, I don't bag that. What are you doing? Yeah, I just remember feeling so bad for, for the father calling, if he only knew. Yeah, so that was, uh, yeah. That, that was, I was, that, gone, were you aware of the, the Girls Gone Wild era? Yeah, I was probably like 10 years old or so. I'm not sure how long ago it was, but I remember being a kid and always hearing about it. It was like the big, you know, voodoo thing that was going on. Was, the, was that the right word, voodoo? I, I taboo, think taboo, I think taboo, taboo, taboo is what taboo right. before. It was like the big taboo thing. I was like, I'd always try to find videos of girls going wild. I couldn't do it there. But there wasn't really the internet back then for me. Or at least I didn't know how to use it. But nowadays, that's, yeah, you that's had to get so the DVDs. shitty now. It's so shitty compared to what we have today, you know? No, yeah, but you, at about... the time, though, it was, there wasn't anything bigger. I mean, that guy, Joe Francis, literally made hundreds of millions of dollars off that. So crazy. Well, also, what you know, the thing about that is that the crazy part about the girls going wild that sometimes, like when, when I'm watching porn, if I watch porn, uh, I've watched a couple porn, is is when <laughs> is that uh, they're doing it because they want to do it, these girls, and there's something like kind of cool about that in a weird fucked up way. It's like 
those girls just want to do this stuff versus like when you're getting paid to do it, you know? Well, exactly. And that's what the whole thing started as. I mean, they were, they were started because you would go to spring break and they would have these contests and these girls were, were, were volunteering and going up there and taking their clothes off. And, and so he was just like, what if we just filmed it and put it out there? Yeah. You know? Well, but I that guess, was really guess, detrimental to a lot of girls because, you know, again, yeah, they were partying and going crazy. And then this guy was releasing the videos without any permission. Well, wow. that guy also, no, no, no they, they would sign stuff because I, I would see them sign stuff. But at the, was, after a while, they did. When it started, they didn't. And he got in a lot of trouble. Well, that serious. guy's whole thing was that he was working for a show called like Too Hot for TV. It was back in the day when like people got hit by trains and all kinds of stuff. Like it was like, <laughs> world's worst ways to die or something yeah, yeah. It, was, it was so remember that infomercial like all of a sudden the guy's getting hit by a train and they're like Man, yeah so he was working for that and then all these girls would people would send in naked pictures all the time in videos and he and then they would just throw them out and he's like what are we throwing these out like we this is what people want to see and then a light bulb went off and the guy made all kinds of money this dude and uh he was such an idiot because he had he kind of had it, like he had a way to, and he wasn't very nice to the people he was working with. Everyone that, that was working for him just had horrible things to say about him. But at the same time, he just got greedy. Like they told him, don't go to, I think it was a part, Florida or Texas. You're not allowed. And he was like, no, we're going to go there. And he goes there and gets- I think it was Texas. I think it was Texas. Get, and gets arrested. And then, and then he didn't have tax problems. Then he had other kinds of problems. Then some, one of the girl's father, like, paid a guy to kidnap him, stick a dildo up his own ass, and then say like, and then try to like, you know, extort him for the money. He had all kinds of issues. I don't, I mean, but it started off going pretty well for that guy. Uh, if he just, yeah. just would have just toned it down or something. Anyway, let's talk about fights. Yeah, it was a skyrocket. That sucker, I mean, it really, I mean, when you talk about the early 2000s, the late, uh, latest 1990s and earliest 2000s, that shit was, was everywhere. It was dominant. I, I remember hit, hitting up Doug Stanhope for that, because Doug Stanhope was the uh, Girls Gone Wild guy before me, before I tried out for it. Yeah. And, and, after, and I was like, hey, should I do this? And he was like, it's good money, but he's like, these are the worst people you're ever going to meet. Like, he gave me a whole thing. So I was happy when that job didn't, didn't come through. Uh, that was one of those ones when you got it, I was so jealous because you know I was a young single guy. I was like, "You got my dream job." Yeah, but I didn't actually do it though. I didn't, none of it. I never. Yeah. Actually, they never actually worked for them. You know. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, let's talk about uh, the, the 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 fights going on. Uh, Walt Harris versus Overeem. Man, I felt so bad for Walt Harris. Just because yeah. I mean, you couldn't help. I I know Walt Harris came to my show, brought his wife. I just, it was after the Arlovsky fight. I was just making fun of him. He was dying laughing. I had him like out of his chair laughing. Like one of those people times you, they get up and run around the room. The, the person. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Like he was right. going crazy, right? And it was, it was great. It was great. Um, but uh, man, that was the fight I was hoping it would get stopped early. And I like Overeem, but he had Overeem hurt. I mean. They, yeah, bad. Some refs would have stopped it. He didn't yeah. have the right ref. For some reason, because I don't know what it is, maybe it's because of the lack of fans um, going crazy, but refs aren't stopping fights during quarantines. I mean, we saw it with the Anthony Smith fight, and now we saw it with this fight. Maybe because they don't have everyone going, ah, oh, going crazy. So maybe the impact feels even harder on the ref. They're like, oh, we got to stop it early. But they're letting fights go. And... Not in a good way. This one happened to be, you could argue that Overeem was all right. You know, he came back and won. But like with the Anthony Smith fight, like that fight yeah. the week before should have been stopped 10 times by the ref. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but the Elkins, the Elkins fight, I didn't feel like they let go very long. I thought they stopped that, you know, yeah. like, like, because that second punch on him didn't land when he was on the ground. That the second Elkins punch was missed. Stopped. The Elkins fight wasn't stopped. Was it, oh, who was it then? Um, was it Dominic Cruz? No, it was. Who? It was on the prelims. And uh, the Matt Brown fight. Matt Brown, yes, the yeah. Matt Brown fight. That's right. So Matt Brown was on the ground. He got him on the good one, and he was dazed. But the, when you saw the replay, that second punch missed, 
And so he was still had a chance and he jumped all over it and stopped it. So I think that one, so I don't think you can say all of them, but I think, because there is, because that one I felt wasn't stopped. I didn't feel like they let that one go. You know, I felt like maybe if anything was a hair early, I don't know. But Matt Brown got up and he was dazed. He was like, he, he looked like afterwards, like he didn't know what was going on. So I was kind yeah, of- that's because he tried to jump right back up, but I mean. <laughs> but, but yeah, but this fight, anyway, the Overeem fight should not have been stopped, but I was hoping it would have been stopped. Uh, right, it, right, it, right. Like, it didn't seem like Wall Harris was in the best of shape. I mean, when they said he had to cut to make 265, he just didn't yeah. look like it. I mean, he had so much going on. And you just, oh, man. You well, and the thing is, I mean, you know, he saw his opportunity, and he went for it, and he gassed out. But you can't blame him. I mean, he had him hurt. He yeah. knew that was his window. He needed a stoppage or a knockout. I think he thought this he was going to get the knockout. I think he really was fully convinced he was about to, he was going to get the knockout. And he put everything he had into that flurry and then after that there was nothing left i feel like every time the ufc uses a fighter's personal tragedy in their life to promote a fight or to promote oh, yes. that fighter uh, they always lose yeah and it's yeah. so depressing look at anthony smith he recently faced adversity when an intruder broke into his house and he gets to beat the fuck up for five rounds and then walt harris you know we all know that story well anthony i, mean, smith, I think that fight i felt like he was doing well the first two rounds. He didn't get beat the fuck up for all five rounds. But it's right. funny because every one of his fights, I'm always like, hey, do you always lose the first two and then come back in the third? Like, he's such a slow starter. And maybe there's a reason for that. But this one, he was like, no, I'm not. I'm going to go up. And then he, he, he gassed. And Glover is not the guy you want to gas against. Um, but that was rough. But you're right about that, about the, 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 uh, the uh, tragedy thing. It was just like, oh, man. I thought so, too. It's almost like they play the song too much. To where it's built up too much so they're now you know there's the added pressure for for on top of what he was already feeling you know there's all the added pressure of that story and i swear to god and i'm not saying this to be in any way facetious or to to make fun of the moment but when he was at the very end when he's got his hands his head in his hands and he's just all keeled over taking shots it's like you could feel him apologizing for the moment, you know, you could feel the the regret, like fuck, I'm going out, I can't win, and, and I got to tell you, it was it was a very for me, I, I felt really bad for the guy in that moment, yeah, because of the way it all been played up and played out publicly and the big video and everything, I I really felt sorry for him, and I felt like that was what was going on. In no, that not moment. to mention like Overing was a step up anyway. It wasn't like yeah, uh, like Overing. I mean, look how good Overeem is. Now, Overeem says he wants a, a title shot. And I'm like, I don't know if Overeem should get a title shot because he seems to, every time he goes up for a title shot, he gets, I mean, like, like Nganu, his head was still flying for three years. Uh, Steve Amiochik fucked him up. So who, who is it? Who, who, who's left? Curtis Blades? So it's going to be Overeem versus Curtis Blades. Blades. I mean, that's a good fight. That's a fight that I would, I would pay to see or I'd watch. But I don't know if he can crack the top two or three guys. I mean, Daniel Cormier, I don't think he's gonna do he's gonna beat Daniel Cormier. So but at the same time in the heavyweight division and Overeem's as good, it's a lot easier for a guy to, to for our number six guy to, to win, to pull off the upset. Yeah. This is the heavyweight division. Um Angela Hill versus Claudia De uh Gadelia. I thought Angela won. Me too. It, it, totally. Dude, here it was the story of the night it's been the story of florida like it's it, like on the one hand they got to to be out there first because florida would let them but at the same time you got florida judges who apparently live in the upside down and just see everything backwards because it was not just the angela hill fight although that was i think of a spectacular zero it was up and down anytime it went to them it was like am i taking crazy pills what the fuck is that? Uh, Even from the this, score? This one was the close, decision. though. The Angela Hill was closer than the other one. I thought the Cheeto Vera got robbed by Song Dong. Completely. That was After awful. That, what happens is, like, somebody make, they make a terrible call in the beginning of the night. And then every other, time, every other bad call was like, well, it's not as bad as the last one. So that one gets pushed over a little bit. It's almost like when you, uh, you, like you hook up with the ugliest person you could find. And then when you get like the fours and fives, like, well, at least it's not, you know, the zero that I hooked up with, you know, it's not the slump buster. So I, 
you don't, you're not getting the, the parallel at all, at all to this? No, not, <laughs> right, you're, you're no it was still, I felt it was completely oh. egregious. Yeah. Oh. Okay. But yeah, so uh, I don't know. It's, it's almost like the, the judges were wearing masks on their eyes. Like they didn't, they didn't know. And, so, you know, in Florida, that might actually happen. Uh, I don't count that as a loss for Angela Hill, though. I don't. Especially when you're number six, the other person's number seven or something, or seven and six. I don't count. Now, um, Keith Peterson, by the way, now that Dominic Cruz said he smells like alcohol and cigarettes, I, every time I look at the guy, I think of him smelling like alcohol and cigarettes. Like, that's one of the – even. Well, he looks like he would smell like alcohol and cigarettes. Hell, I yeah. Mean, he, he looks like he just sits in a dark room just, you know, by himself, <laughs> jerking off online. <laughs> and then they call him up like, oh, okay, I got to go, you know, ref a fight. Oh, 100%. He just has kind of – yeah, he has some kind of a creeper look, man. Like, they're going to find – a girl locked in his basement, I think for sure. Like I can picture a bunch of like kids hanging out behind like Seven Eleven, like high school kids, and then Keith Peterson there at the, as the guy buying them drinks for some reason. Like I, he just seems like that guy that was always too old. <laughs> there's always so that buying a beer and selling him cigarettes. There's always that one guy that was like too old to hang out with the high school kids. Like he graduated like four or five years ago. Everyone's like happy because he has a car and he's cool, sort of. But he's not really cool when you look Yeah, he'll buy like, them beer. You're like, why was that guy 23 years old? Uh, Eric Anders, man, there's a case, I think, of a guy being too athletic for his own good. I mean, the guy was a two-time national champion for Alabama at football. And he, and he got kind of yeah. just thrown to the UFC because he was knocking everybody out. But now I feel like you're seeing a little bit of where he needs to catch up on. These guys have been fighting for 10 years longer than him. Uh, but that was another one that I thought that he clearly won the fight, two to one. I mean, really? I, Eric, wait, Eric I, Anders? No, Eric said he lost. I think it's about Barboza. Barboza lost. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. To, to Dan EJ. That fight. That was a good fight, though, man. That was a great fight. It was a great fight. But, yeah, Barboza won that fight. I mean, yeah, totally. that sucks. So bad totally. for him. He was like on his way out of the UFC too. He was asking for his release, and then you go cut even more weight than you're used to, and then you lose to a shitty decision. But Dana said he thought he won. Um, so, I, you know, when, when when Dana thinks you won, he's not gonna get cut anytime soon. He looked good at 145. Yeah, EJ now won five in a row. He called out the Korean zombie. That, that's a guy you don't want to call out the zombie because. <laughs> I mean, he just, he's just been killing people. The zombie's been fucking up everybody recently. I mean, he ran through Frankie Edgar. And who the fuck runs through Frankie Edgar? Like, nobody. Um, right. By the way, Kevin Randleman's in the Hall of Fame. So happy for Kevin Randleman. Uh, there's a guy we had in the podcast, I don't know how many times. He would call me afterwards. He would call me to talk. He was such a good guy. Now, what happened was when I first he started following me and I got Kevin Randleman, he came on the podcast and he got mad. He's like, I thought I was going to get roasted, not toasted. He really was like getting mad at me for not roasting him. And I'm like, dude, you're a legend, LOL. He's like, come on, man, make fun of me, make fun of me. Finally, one day I was like, all right, I'm having a contest. I'm giving out a free Tank Abbott sign, whatever, to the best person with the Kevin Randleman thing. My whole thing got flooded with Randleman jokes, just him doing steroids and gassing out. <laughs> So he calls me up. He's like, tap, tap. He tapped over the phone. He's like, tell him, awesome. to, tell him to stop. Tell him to stop. He's like, my wife is yelling at me right now, going, you fucking asked for this, you idiot. This and that. Like, and then we became friends. I got him, I got him uh, presenting at the MMA Awards. He was so happy. He was a guy who I think that like, really felt that uh, people forgot about him. And, and he, he was out of the spotlight. He never craved the spotlight. He was coaching wrestling. He had a wrestling club. He had like 50 kids that were wrestling for him. He was a two-time national champion. He was a great motivator. His wife was a beautiful woman, Elizabeth. He's got like five kids. And it's funny because I had Dana White on the podcast, but I'm not saying that like I'm the guy. I'm not looking for accolades or people, you know, telling me how great I am. But I had Dana on my podcast about two years ago. And I said, hey, when's Kevin Randleman going to make the Hall of Fame? Is that going to happen? And he's like, yes, Adam, I promise that'll happen. So when that happened, I was like, I was so happy for him because- uh, Well, you know, 
it seems like, I, I, first of all, I love the video package they put together because I, I feel like it really gave a lot of perspective on his influence on the modern UFC. I thought that was pretty amazing. But it, I think it also spoke to what you were saying that he was kind of forgotten, the forgotten guy. I feel like he was there right before it really exploded. He was. Right before those guys, you know, the Iceman and, and uh, uh, what's his name? Pito. Uh, okay. Yeah, all those guys. You know, the, before that's when it really, and I feel like he was right before, like one class before that. He was also a little bit inconsistent. I mean, he, he came out and he was just murdering people at first. And, and then when he knocked out Crow Cop, it was like on top of the world. Then a couple losses that maybe he shouldn't have had. He lost to Randy Couture. Um, he lost to like good, great guys. But then he kind of had some injuries and had some, had some he had issues towards the end of his career. He wasn't the same Kevin Randleman. But the Kevin Randleman that came out of college, that was a two-time national champion, that was jumping over the ring, that was just murdering people. I think yeah. I think would have been maybe the best ever had he also had the right coaching. He also came from a background where they just did wrestling. They didn't know jujitsu. It was this hammer house wrestling. It was him, Mark Coleman, Bill Baroni, Wes Sims. It was just team hammer house. And they were just fucking tough guys, you know? Uh, but Kevin was awesome. Like, I mean, you talk about a motivating guy. I, I can't stress, if you want to listen to some good podcasts, listen to Kevin Ronaldman on MMA Roasted. It, like, he, he, he recalls when Tito Ortiz, no, when uh, Randy beat Coleman and Tito Ortiz was talking shit to Coleman like in the octagon, I think it was UFC 100. And Kevin was watching from home and he got so angry, he started running through the arena to fight Tito Ortiz. And then his, <laughs> wife, his wife followed him in the car going, get back in the house, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> he went to go fight, he went to go run, run to go fight Tito. But that's the kind of dude he was, you know? Like, he didn't need anybody with him. He didn't even, he wasn't, like he was like, fuck it, you're making fun of my guy. I'm gonna go get him. Like that's Kevin Randleman for you. Like he he was the best. Uh, all right. So uh, Sun Gedang, I thought he lost. He was a good fighter though. Chido Vera always starts slow. There are certain fighters that the first round they figure you out and they kind of give away the first round, and it just comes yeah. back to bite him in the ass. And that's what happened here. Even though I thought he won. Uh, I Matt, did too. Matt Brown was killing it at first, and then uh Dude, with Matt Brown and like uh, damage, you know, I, and I was just like, man, is this UFC classic? Ha! What am I? <laughs> like, they dragged out some names, baby. And I was like, oh, you know what I felt sorry for was the guy that took the fight on like three days' notice. Oh, Who yeah. Was that guy in the, in the he, prelims. He fought, he, he fought Giga and he fought like a weight class above him. And then oh, he, my and he God. did pretty well, though. He did pretty well. Well, he did pretty well for like the three quarters of the first round. But but there, but there's a certain point where the other guy realized, oh, I could do whatever I want to him. And at that point, he was just picking his shots. He was just kind of fucking with him, you know? I mean, the guy's tough as nails, and he would try to get in there, but the, the guy kept him at range. He was taller. He obviously had had the full camp. And he, I mean, the second he realized he could just pick him apart, it was at that point, it just didn't. I mean, it, did have, it did have like a Rudy feel to it where you were like, you just watching the guy just get the shit beaten out of him. Well, yeah, it did. I mean, and then, and then, you know, I mean, he clearly he wasn't in fight shape. I mean, and that's the thing, like, I'm watching, like, he doesn't look like, and they're like, you took this fight on Thursday. And I'm like, well, should they allow someone to take a fight on Thursday? The guy, I mean, I was like, bullshit, guys. But I guess having already lost one fight, didn't they already lose one fight? They didn't want to lose another. I'm like, yeah. Either way, I just was like, I was like, man, this. I don't think you let a guy take a fight on Thursday. You know well, who I liked? I mean, you know who I liked was, uh, well, I had him on the show, too. I forgot, Nate the Train, the guy that fought Darren Elkins. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, that guy, he was, he was <laughs> it's so funny. He, he kind of looks like... Uh, uh, like a Simpsons character, <laughs> like in real life. Nice. He has like a Simpsons face. There's something, there's a character that's not a regular character but that they've shown before. And I don't know if it's like from the episode where Homer got in really good shape because he went to the Gaim. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think that might be the one though. And he kind of, I mean, he just looks like a Simpsons character to me. But I forgot, Joe, do you remember having him on the podcast? I, I, I don't, but when he opened his mouth, in the interview, post-fight interview, I was blown away. 
I thought Mike Perry was the wigger king of the UFC. Dude, step aside, Mike Perry. Dude, when he was yelling like, Dana, Dana! Dana! <laughs> Dana was like, you could tell Dana was like, it's one thing to yell Dana when there's like a million people in the, in the crowd. But when he's just by himself, like, I could almost feel Dana feeling uncomfortable. Like, like... <laughs> who the fuck? Did, like, who did we bring into the UFC? Who is this? So funny? I loved it. I thought it was some showmanship. Although I feel like you shouldn't turn around and start yelling for the owner of the UFC until you've actually knocked him out. It's yeah, like it was he, a close fight. He ah, did a ah. he did a walk away, but he didn't knock the guy out. He just hit him really good and was like, "Just be that." It's like, yeah, he's so standing there. You might want to go fight him. The fight's not over. I mean. It's like it's like he hit a foul ball, that a really gorgeous foul ball, and decided to run the bases anyway. You know, and it's like you can't run the bases till you hit the home run. Did you see that? Like he Did was just like, yeah, he was yeah, still standing there. You might want to go fight him. <laughs> it's almost like he was like surprised that he was there. But I'll tell you, you know what though? Everybody was talking about him. Somebody said that he's the person that. Uh, Somebody put on my Twitter feed, this is the guy he thinks of as the guy who robbed Anthony Smith's house, like the meth head that came at like three o'clock in the morning. Right, 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 right. <laughs> like that was the guy that was like, ah! <laughs> You're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Can I bring up something? Thing. What? So, I don't mean to change the subject, uh, but we just had a week of three uh, UFC cards, which was so great. You know, we had like a month off or two months off. Um, but if you go on UFC's website, they only have one event listed in the upcoming section, and that's the Amanda Nunes versus Felicia Spencer for June 6th, and they only have five fights on that card so far. Do you think the UFC blew their load with all of these no, events in one week? They're, they're trying to find a spot May 30th. They're trying to find the spot May 30th, but they can't. Oh, okay. Something, I don't know, something like they, they can't go to Jacksonville again or something. So they're looking either like Vegas or Arizona. So they're actually okay. trying to find the spot right now. But I don't even know who's the headliner. I thought it was going to be Woodley versus Burns. I thought that contract was signed, but I guess it's not. I guess all these comics, all these, comics, all these fighters keep uh, posting out like, contract came in, waiting for my opponent to sign it. So I guess they're just kind of trying to sign like a thousand fights right now and seeing who actually signs it. Man, I'm, that's exciting. Wait for that big load to come out of all the fights that have just been made. Can't wait for that, dude. That's what she said. Yeah. I, I'm I sorry, that. I've been watching The Office. Can I tell you guys something? Okay, I never watched The Office because it was mostly a show in the 2010s when we were out at the clubs every single night. So now in quarantine, I'm getting to watch all these episodes because I've never seen them before. So I'm watching them for the first time. Yeah, and 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 I can't you know, and, and now that's where I realized Boom Roasted came from the office. I oh, didn't I didn't even know that. that. Yeah, because uh. there's a Michael Scott gets roasted thing, and he gets all butthurt, and then he comes back the next day with all his notes on everybody. He goes, "You're an alcoholic, and you're beginning to look like a man." Boom, roasted. Oh, you you know, you, yes, it's from the office. I didn't ben, know that either. I thought that was Ben Askren, like made that up. He took it from the office, dude. Uh, I didn't know it either. I was watching. I was like, ah, that's it. Boom, roasted. Boom, roasted. Damn. It's a big, it, and it's a hilarious episode. You have to see it. It's oh, brilliant. Okay. It's a season five. That makes sense because I, I get the, I get the, the, uh, the, the uh, memes all the time. So, uh, yeah. Um, all right. So waiting for Carla Esparza to come on as well as Sean McCorkle. Uh, all right. So now... Everyone saw how good Mike Tyson looked, right? You see the Mike Tyson video, the 15th, the red. Yeah. We talked about that, right? Well, now, yes. oh, now Vander Holyfield made a video <laughs> and he said he's back too. So now they're gonna make Tyson Holyfield three. I don't know about this one, guys. Uh, At least they're both old, right? At least they're both really old. It is not gonna, one old ass dude going against like John Jones. I mean, this, yeah, and yeah. that's the other thing. Why not have a seniors division of everything? I mean, if people want to see him, I mean, let Jordan and all those old guys play basketball again. Why not? I mean, if people want to see him, somebody's going to pay to see it. You know, I don't see why they shouldn't do it. If they still have the stamina, you know? Because, I mean, it's like that three-on-three -three kind of became that. People were watching that. Yeah, but those guys were still good, the three-on-three -three guys. And they weren't – I mean, look, did, is anyone going to – 
talk about, you know, Chocolate L Tito 3 the, uh, on Golden Boy MMA. Like, are Probably. People, no, they're not. Nobody's going to reference that. Everyone's going to say that Chuck Liddell beat Tito twice when it counted. But, but people still paid to see it. Right. People, right. People still, right. You're right. But at the same time, I don't know about this Tyson Holyfield. Thing. I think Holyfield's going to win again. That's the thing. I think he, this guy has Holyfield's, uh, has Tyson's number. I like, and I want Tyson to win. I, I do. I just don't know if he's going to beat Holyfield again. Or ever. He never beat him the first time. Uh, At this point, it's a full reset. So it's a complete, they're not the same people they were back then. So it doesn't, I mean, it's a full reset. Who knows? This time he's going to bite out his, his uh, hearing aid. Uh, but no, but, but seriously, I, 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 it's great for jokes. I, and they're walking to the ring today. It's going to air on the history channel. <laughs> you know? The but, water bottles filled with Metamucil. Yeah, I mean, for comedy purposes, sure. Have this fight all night long. I'm going to make fucking one after another. If not, they're going to have a ramp on the way in there. You know, but at the they're same time. They're not going to be wearing their cup. They're going to gonna be wearing the pens. Yeah, oh fucking handicap parking for the fighters. <laughs> I mean, there's just all kinds of stuff there. <laughs> But they're gonna skip the Ben, skip the ice bag, and just bring out the Ben game. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be great for that. Sure, please. At the same time, I think Holyfield though has been staying training the whole time. Like he hasn't left the gym. Tyson took like fifteen years off. So I don't know. I don't even know if it's a full reset. Um, hey boys, I gotta take off. But it was Carla, nice you talking here? To you for thirty minutes. I gotta take yeah, off, I'm boys. Here. Uh, is coming a video uh, on Zoom? Um, yeah, I tried, I tried going on my computer. Is it video? Yes. Or is it a call? It's video. I want to see your beautiful face. Hello? Okay. Yeah. I just, I clicked the link. Let me, uh, type it in. Hold on. <laughs> he seems happy. How are you, by the way? Good. Just chilling. Just stopped by the gym and got some cookies and stuff and, you know. Been pinging out all week. Oh, nice. There you go. So what are you back up to 120? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I, I don't even want to touch a scale right now. <laughs> Dude, I, I've, been, I've been out of wrestling for 23 years. I stopped wrestling when I was 17 or 18. And it's still, I still have an eating disorder. I go near the scale and, and there's so much emotion attached to like, I'm like, oh, this is water weight. And this is that. I could lose this. T and I'm like, well, I don't have a match coming up. Like, what's wrong with me? Like, I have such eating disorder from wrestling in high school and college. I mean, I don't know if it ever goes away. Uh, oh, 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 yeah, I don't think so. That. I don't think it ever will. I think uh, that the scale will probably always, like, bring up weird emotions. Um, uh, I'm on here right now. Let me see. Is, it, is there, like, a little camera thing? Oh, okay, here we go. Here we go. Um, yeah, I just did a Zoom meeting this morning too. Oh, there we go! Sponsor. Boom! There she is. All right, hey. I'm, gonna this, I'm gonna get this out. Here we go. Um, all right, so we got Carla Esparza with us, the Cookie Monster, coming off a huge Woo. win over the Karate Hottie, uh, UFC 249. Uh, did that fight go as expected? Um, I mean, just in the sense that I like had my hand raised, but like. She, uh, I definitely thought she was going to engage a lot more. So, like, on that regard, no. I thought I was going to be able to get more takedowns in and, and do a lot more uh, things that I had trained. But a win is a win. Yeah, a win's a win. And you got, what, three in a row now, which is great. Um, now, at the end of the third round, you came in like, like Joe Frazier, just throwing fucking crazy hooks, like, bah, bah, bah. And I was like, and I think you kind of stole the round. Or maybe you were winning, but that, that definitely helped solidify the round. Was that part of the plan? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, my coach told me, like, it might be one and one. So he was like, just let the gas tank go. Like, I wasn't tired at all. And I was just, you know, just let it go and, and go for broke, pretty much. Now, do you wish maybe that you would have uh, started throwing those crazy hooks earlier and maybe got a knockout? Yeah, definitely. I felt like I, I landed some nice uh, right hands, but uh, I definitely felt like I would have I, – I wish I could have put more pressure. Like, I just felt like she was – waiting for me to come in and just keeping like, you know, like that six foot rule, like just kind of just kept that distance. And it was really hard to, to close the gap on her. 
Now, how did you train? Because it was during quarantine. Who did you bring in to emulate the karate hottie? Um, I didn't really bring in anybody. Like I have, I just trained with my teammates, like the fight, the pro fight team, like a few of us were just still getting together to train with our coach. And he was basically like, nobody's allowed to go anywhere. Just gym home, gym home, you know, like we, we, we have jobs to do and we can't afford to get sick. So, uh, you know, like we just were all super careful and just kind of stayed within our group. That's why I even had like a fight watch party in my house and somebody commented like, you, why are you guys all getting together? Like, and it's just like, if one of us has it, we all have it already. So, you know, whatever. Did you feel your like family? Like, so. Yeah. Did you feel kind of like a rebel? Like you were sneaking out to train with your little crew of fighters? It's so funny. Yeah. You feel like you're doing something naughty by like going to the gym. It's so weird. By the way, this is Greg Wilson, one of the funniest comics in the world. We hung out that night. Remember? In yeah, Vegas? no, yeah. I remember. Yeah. For sure. And me. You, Ashley was there. Right. I was being loud and Adam was being ashamed of me. <laughs> and then you guys were all dead. But you were very <laughs> nice. You were very sweet. Yeah. Until she started like making out with everybody on the dance floor and everything. That was kind of cool. No, I'm kidding. It never <laughs> happened. Never happened. I have to. Carla said to ask me if I could keep it appropriate and not ask inappropriate questions. Which, and then like, via text, and I was going to be like, all right, uh, hey, Carla, how's it going? Thank you. Good night. Just to see what you'd say. But then I was like, <laughs> Right, dude? I'm like, I, I was seriously like wondering if you'd even be able to pull it off. I'm like, I don't know about this. But, but you told me you like coming on the show because I ask you questions you don't hear from other people. Like that. Okay, well, I'll just say that for like normal conversations and you can just ask me like, be cool. Because you, you go over the top sometimes. I'm like, uh, like. I, I know, but then you say that's why you like coming on the show. That's why I go over the top, and then I get asked. I'm like, I yeah. agree with you, Carla. No. I think sometimes, especially with the girl fighters, he goes way too far. Oh, yeah, right, Greg. I mean, have you heard his acts? <laughs> yeah. No, she's just like my wife. She's like, she's like my wife. My wife's like, I'm so happy. You're the best husband. I'm so, I could not be happier. The next day, I'm not getting what I want. I'm like, well, you just told me I was the best fucking husband like yesterday but then she says you know this is not working for me but but so you should be used to it yeah women, i am right? I'm, I'm, I'm i'm used to attractive women that are fucking bipolar yes that, that's that's true i'm totally used to that <laughs> uh i totally get oh it God. so claudia Gadella, did you think she beat angie or no i don't think so i i think that's like maybe the worst i've ever seen her she called you out afterwards yeah like yeah, she actually kind of called me out like in an interview a couple weeks ago. So after my fight, like I kind of called her out and then she called me out like over the mic and then I called her back out on Instagram. So oh, she wants no. to fight me. I want to fight her. Like, let's do this. Now, the, the thing is that she, I thought you won that fight. They gave it to her, right? But I thought, yeah. I, I, thought I think I was there. I thought, I definitely thought you won that. You definitely hurt her too. Um, that was, I think, the first time that people were, saw how good your power was. Cause you, you like dropped her. Yeah. Um, but then she called you out and she, but she's come like beat you. So she called out someone that she already beat technically, which is also kind of weird. No. Well, I think like in an interview too, like everybody was like giving her crap after the fight, like you lost that fight, you lost that fight. And I think she just kind of wants to solidify it to people that she really won. Uh, and like, I feel like I won and I, and I deserve to have my hand raised. And this time, like, I really don't want to leave it to the judges. You know, I want to knock her out. I want to finish her. Like, I just... I want to leave no no room for error. By the way, I like the video you made, you and your friends. So, Greg, there's this new challenge videos now where, like, it's basically girls being hot but also fighting each other. So she made it with, like, Ashley and this one, that one. It's, it's a pretty hot video on Instagram, right? <laughs> I'll have to look that up in private. A bit later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, no, like, to me, like, we all have so much time right now and, like, that's like the new thing, like doing videos with your friends, but like them not really being there because everyone's, you know, quarantined, so. But there was another yeah. video, a first video that had like other hot female fighters getting ready. It was a different challenge. And then it was so, were you guys, was this your response to that video? Because you guys felt left out? No, we did the first video. Actually, we were the first group of fighters that did like that uh, don't rush challenge where you like, put a glove in the thing and you come back and you're like dressed up and oh. you know, like 
my teammate actually saw like some track people do it. So she's like, let's do this. So me and all the girls on my fight team were like, we did that at the gym. We like passed the glove to each other and, you know, got all ready and stuff. So, you know, like that, that was oh, really fun. The no girls. That, I saw all these fighter girls doing it. Like, uh, so it kind of feels cool to be like a trendsetter. <laughs> so that, uh, so that's, but, I, but I feel like now there's like a gang of hot girl fighters that are against each other. It's like your crew of like you and Ashley Evans and Felice against the karate hottie and and those is there is there like a rivalry between cha Instagram challenges brewing here? Um, you know, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, I I think we were the trendsetters. We were first. So we're the <laughs> oh. <laughs> so basically, so basically, it's only a rivalry for them. <laughs> 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 Greg, you gotta see these videos, by the way, because these girls—they all start. Oh, off, I'm gonna see these videos. They—they they all start off like boom, punch the camera, like, block it, and then I go, oh shit! Like, and then, but then they're all like done up and like ready to go out, and they're booty. Oh no, that's the Don't Rush Challenge. That's yeah, the first one. Yeah, the first one. I like the first one better. That was the second one was good too, but the one where they're all like, like they're all like in, they just woke up, and then they're like boom, and all of a sudden they're like. Down the. Don't like the second one. I like Dude, the second so one cool. too. I like both of them. I like both. We had of them. a baby hitting the camera. I, I do. That was. I think that was. My <laughs> uh, so um, all right. So I'm allowed to ask you about boyfriends, right, or Tinder, or anything like that, right? We're not gonna go there. Okay. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, where did you think of the fights on Saturday? Um, I I thought they were they were really good. A lot of bad like split decisions. My teammate Cheeto lost like a really bad split decision yeah. against uh, Song. That's bad. Song, bad, you know, bad, bad. I thought that was the yeah. worst. Song, you're good name though. That was the worst decision of the whole night. I thought. Yeah, no, it was pretty bad. Uh, like, and I feel bad for him too because he's been going like back to back like three fight camps where his opponents fell out. And finally, he gets the opportunity, opportunity, and he pulls it off and does what he's supposed to do, and he gets that decision taken from him. So at the same time, at the same time, you're right, 100. I thought that was the worst of the of the three bad decisions. That was the worst one. However, he's a slow starter. Every one of his, a lot of his fights, he loses that first round, uh, and then ah. he comes back in the second, and he gets the finish or the third, and this one he didn't get this. And then I think that first round, if he just would have started a little quicker, I think he would have won. Yeah, for sure. I agree. Um, and which is kind of cool. Like, I think because he usually like kind of gets beat up in the first round and then, so it makes it look more dramatic when he goes and like whips someone up in the second or the third and finishes them. But yeah, definitely. Um, it would have been, I think if he had started faster Yeah. and uh, felt a little bit more comfortable letting go. That's hard. It's a hard thing to do because like, like with Anthony Smith last week, who's always a slow starter, start as fast as he, as he could be, but then all of a sudden burns out. Now, is it true, like what they were saying on the, because you were in there, that you could hear everything the coach is saying when, versus like when there's a crowd, so you do it more? Yeah, I heard the commentators and I heard the coaches. Like, I normally tune everything out and hear my coaches, but I heard like, and I can hear their coaches too sometimes, but uh, I heard like the commentators like DC and Joe Rogan, like, just talking and I think they're used to talking so loud because of the crowd that it was just right. like they were overly like overcompensating it but like there was no crowd to like you know to you know to speak over so it was just like extra loud and I could hear like everything did that fuck you up a little bit because I, were they saying well I gave this round to Waterson or something did that kind of was that in your head yeah, it was a little bit, but they also like kind of gave me advice. They're like, oh, Carla needs to do this. Carla needs to do that. Or she's not doing this. And I was like, all right, fuck you. But thank you. No, I'm just kidding. Really? <laughs> yeah. actually, actually I'm just kidding. Their, wait, did you actually take their advice? Uh, a little bit. Like, I remember DC saying like, oh, she's not, you know, she's not, she's either going for the takedowns or just striking. Like, she needs to put it together more and this and that. And I was like, all right. Wow. That, yes. is, that is crazy. Like. Has that ever happened on a professional sports level where the person listens to the commentators and actually changes it during the fight? Like, that doesn't happen in basketball. They're not listening to Bob Costas, the fucking Lakers. He's like, oh, LeBron needs to do a cross. And he's like, oh, shit, really? Like, that doesn't happen. I mean, even in baseball, you know, the, the hitter is not like, well, if he just crouches down a little more. Like, that, I mean, that's crazy because it's also coming from 
DC, who's a good coach, who knows the stuff. Wow, that's very interesting. That's crazy. Yeah, like coaches wrestling and stuff. Yeah. Now, did, was it hard? That was DC's um, advice different than what you were getting from Oyama? Um, no, I think it was just like a little something extra. Like my coach told me like to put, put the numbers together, go for more takedowns. But I think just like that little like go for – like coach always tells me like go for a takedown, come up to the strikes. Like that's what we train. But I guess it is kind of like hearing like another boy, like hearing more people say it kind of like solidifies in your mind a little bit because you know that like DC is watching it like the fans are watching it or like they're seeing it from another perspective. And if they're saying it too, it just kind of solidifies it a little bit more. By the way, your friend Shaney Smash got me in trouble, by the way. So, How so? Uh, so Greg, her friend Shaney Smash is like, like one of the hottest blondes like ever she's a super hot girl I, she was in my phone uh, well, her last name is Smash. yeah her last name is um, i don't know if it's a real last name but anyway so she has this app called fight camp where she teaches like these 10 round boxing and i downloaded it i was like i gotta do something from home i have a punching bag and it's great they give you like 10 round workouts and with push-ups and sit-ups in between and it's every day is different it's like the peloton for fighting and it's free right now which is like awesome. I'm, I'm getting in like great shape, doing 45 minute workout today. It's her, like three other people are on it. So I text Shaney like, hey, I'm enjoying your, your workouts. Like good work, you know? Like, fucking, she puts on Instagram, thank you, Adam. And my wife was like, oh hell no, this is who you're fucking working out. My wife is like, I mean, she didn't really get mad. She was like- Well, you oh, shouldn't right. have put the eggplant with the peach and the <laughs> There was, trust That's me. That's what did it. There was no eggplant, none of that, right? But so now, but now my wife's taking her class. So, so that's good. Like she's actually, uh, she does a good job with that. If you didn't know about that, that app, it's a good app. Have you heard of it? Oh yeah, I'm not on the app, but like I, I watch her story all the time and like I see people posting it and stuff. But I mean, I'm fortunate enough where like I'm still, I still get to train with my fight team. So I'd rather have the real thing, but yeah, um, I'm, I definitely wouldn't mind like checking out one of her classes one day and uh, doing it. I actually have like, hold on. What's going on now? She's getting, getting is, something. Oh, this is real professional, Carla. Someone who texted me. Oh, makes me sure. oh there you go. Wow. What is it? <laughs> it doesn't seem like that would hold up very long, though. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. But that's the only like bag or anything I have at home. So I'll do her class. I know she has like one of those things. She's yeah. Like, yeah, that's the thing. It's like it's like a thousand dollars a year or something for this thing. But they send you like gloves that track how many punches you throw, and then they send you a bag that like registers how many punches you throw, and then oh, all really? the app. Uh, yeah, this is a whole thing. But I just do it with my punching bag. I'm like, you know, why, you know? But I might. I don't. But I'm not sure if if it's after quarantine they're gonna start charging again. So, you know, Who knows? pretty cool. But that's cool. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna definitely tell her you uh, got her. She got you in trouble. <laughs> yeah, cause she fucking posts like like hearts, like oh, like love when I see this, and I'm like, oh, my my, my wife's cool. She knows that I'm not gonna like. Yeah. You know, I, I like your I, wife I, has to be cool if she's with you. <laughs> yeah, tolerant, very tolerant. Uh, <laughs> she's really Greg. What is that? She's pretty tolerant. <laughs> she gives you the business pretty good, man. Oh, she does. She <laughs> does. Yeah, you know, she's, she's, she's cool sometimes, and sometimes it's like... No, no, there's know. a show, there's a new show called, you see that show where, like, it's like t t Temptation, where it's like guys get paid to not have sex, it's on Netflix, they got, like, 20 people on Netflix, and, like, 10 hot guys, 10 hot girls, they get them drunk, and then, like, and then they don't know they're on a game show, and they're like, hey, you guys earn 100 grand if you don't have sex, and every time you hook up, you lose money, like, that's the whole premise. So I'm like, babe, you want to watch this? She's like, if all these people not have sex, I'll look in the mirror. I'm like, I'm like, that's, that's real nice. Of you. I was gonna say, I'm kind of the world heavyweight champ of that already. I don't know. If, uh, <laughs> not having. I can sex. see why they didn't invite me. I would definitely <laughs> dominate. I, I would definitely dominate everybody in the not having sex category. It'd be, be like, real easy. Be like, they could announce the winner in the first episode, first segment of the first episode. <laughs> I, I have to go to my own fucking island. Now, Carla, um, are you ready to fight? How, how quick are you going to turn over? I mean, 
I didn't really take any damage in this fight, like at all, other than like a, a couple bruises on my leg. So I'd, I'd be game to fight like pretty soon, honestly, like in the next couple months for sure. Wow. And then the weight cut was no issue. Huh? By the way, Carla, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to tell you, you know, you're welcome. Um, you know, you, you won because I notoriously picked Watterson. <laughs> and uh, I, that's the kiss of that. So, uh, you know, so I did that for you. I did that for you. I, I was like, whoever I choose loses. So I'm picking her. So and you're welcome. I picked you. Oh. I, I said, you guys are all sleeping <laughs> on Carla's striking. I go, you guys all, everyone, no offense, that a lot of people think of you as one dimensional because maybe when you first came, you were a very heavily wrestler. And I go, people yeah. forget uh, how good her striking has gotten. Almost to the point where I'm like, hoping you go back to wrestling more because I don't want you to become a striker full time and because your wrestling is so good. You know, sometimes people go, they go too far the other way. You forget that they're wrestlers. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I was we trying, I was that? trying to go for some shots, but yeah. you know, she was- uh, You gotta, you gotta keep in mind also, you. Carla, that I, I don't know what I'm talking about. So it's not like it's Adam or something. Well, so I when like I pick Carla, somebody, it's literally just to ruin their fight. And for, Carla, by the way, I mean, no disrespect to Karate Hottie, I think she's a great fighter. But I think in a way, she was fighting not to lose. And you were fighting to win, you know? Yeah. And I think the judges saw that too, uh, that she, she, she wins a lot of, that's kind of her, she's really good at countering, kind of point fighting. Uh, yeah. Karate style. Karate style. And you're, and you're a fucking a gamer, you know? So you're, you're in every fight, uh, even in, you know, to just always, and there's no quitting you, so. Thank you. Awesome. Thank so, you. We have the great Sean McCorkle joined us. Carla, you can stay for this segment. Sean McCorkle, oh. uh, you know Sean McCorkle? I don't think we met. All right, so Sean McCorkle was a UFC heavyweight, was uh, beat Mark Hunt in 59 seconds, uh, is now retired, uh, has a bunch of businesses, probably most of them are not legal. Uh, <laughs> And uh, spends his days arguing with people on Facebook about politics, uh, <laughs> uh, trolling fighters, putting on events. He put on a, a, a huge event in Indiana where it was half, uh, it was fights as well as hot women having pillow fights. And then people uh, said that his fights were fixed because the pillow fights were not real fights or something. Uh, but this dude is, he's hilarious. Probably he's, most people that do comedy should not do comedy. Greg. Uh, will back me up on this. People think, oh, because they're funny here and there. They become comedians and they're just wasting everyone's time. He's the one, probably like three people where I'm like, you need to do comedy. You're fucking hilarious. But for some reason, he hates himself. But anyway, so uh, it's the McCorkle Minute uh, coming in fresh. Uh, you've seen him in the UFC, in Bellator. <laughs> He's got a win over Mario Pujanowski, uh, who's the world's strongest man. Give it up for Sean McCorkle. <laughs> I don't know how to follow that uh, build up. Um, you know, it's funny you said some people that say stuff that's funny here and there should do comedy. There's some people who do comedy who've never said anything funny, not on stage or otherwise. But enough about Brendan Sean. We'll get to him later. Um, <laughs> the, uh, what do we got? Okay, so finally he was able to come up with a few jokes, Adam, because there's some stuff going on in the MMA news. Um, you know, I don't know if you saw John Jones and Francis and Gandhi have been going back and forth, you know, talking smack to each other about fighting. I think it's probably a terrible fight for John Jones, honestly. Um, it's just, gosh, that dude, man, is un ungodly, the amount of power Ngannou has. But um, I did see a tweet recently that John Jones just a few minutes ago said, uh, he told Ngannou, listen, I've got a six-pack, a bunch of weapons you've never seen, and a huge amount of speed. Wait a minute. No, that was just a list of what the police found in his car last month when they pulled him over. I'm sorry, Adam. Nice. So, Boom, um, <laughs> confused on that one. Um, <laughs> was uh, oh, I'm still debating this one. Oh well. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. We were. Uh, I always get nervous. You know, we were talking about Shab two minutes ago. Um, but uh, I heard Brendan Shab one time at a party. He told somebody that he sees himself as the second coming of Richard Cry. Uh, which I thought, you know, was pretty apt. Um, you know, I mean, if anything, that's what I think of when I see uh, Shab make jokes. Man, that guy's as good as Richard Pryor. But I also, on that topic, I saw, I don't know if you guys ever, I mean, your stand-up comedians, a couple of you, so you probably did. Did you see where um, 
uh, Richard Pryor's wife said that during the 70s when uh, Pryor would do too much cocaine, like he would actually hook up and have sex with um, Marlon Brandon. I don't know if you guys heard that. That was like a big story mm -hmm. there for a while. Yeah. And um, they were saying that he uh, was blowing Marlon Brando at several parties. And so I started thinking about it and I was like, you know, like Shaw may not be the second coming of Richard Pryor, but he reminds me a lot of Richard Pryor the second time that Marlon Brando's coming. <laughs> I don't know. All right. He sucks dick. That's what I was getting. All right. <laughs> if you guys well, that was a short hand lady. On the same topic, um, you know, it's been a weird <laughs> couple weeks in MMA. You got um, Mike Tyson says he's coming back maybe to fight a 60-year-old event or Holyfield. You got Josh Thompson announcing his retirement um, after five years of not competing. All of a sudden, he announced he was going to retire. You got Henry Cejudo saying he's going to retire. Saturday night, and then he now just announced today, his manager said, expect to see him in the summer. You got this whole virus thing going on, and uh, the whole thing is weird because it's like like Dana White, they said the other day, he said, don't expect to see any fans for the rest of 2020 at any UFC events. And he said also not for the first quarter of 2021 if Henry Cejudo does indeed come back and fight. Because <laughs> he's not a very big draw. Okay. We got it, we got it, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> Not good when you find yourself explaining your jokes. Um, <laughs> so the new material. Who knows? Anyway, so I, I was thinking about Nganu. I was thinking about you know Shab trying to come up with jokes or whatever, and I was thinking what they have in common. And uh, the only thing I could come up with is Nganu's fights are a lot like a night in Brendan Shab's bedroom. Like it's over faster than we'd hoped. Uh, everybody involved leaves disappointed. Uh, one guy likely has brain damage, and it usually ends up with a sweaty black guy on top of it. So <laughs> that was uh, all I could come up with for uh, Shab and Ngannou. So that was pretty much what I got. I had another one, but I decided not to do it because it was too uh, racist. So what's, up with Brent? What's, with, what's up with Shab? Are you, like, not a fan? I, I ask myself that every day. <laughs> no. Um, Shab started uh, – he got mad a long time ago because Matt Mitrione asked me to – make some jokes or to write some jokes for him when they were in a fight and the first thing I said is that he reminds me of uh, Adam Sandler with Down syndrome but even more retarded and so like Matt put that on line and then I, I roasted him with something else and so then he did some article where he said that it, he was mad at me not Matt because he knows I'm the one writing the jokes and blah 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 so then we ran into each other somewhere and I heard him say something at an audition I heard him say something about me and then I challenged him to fight then and he wouldn't because um, I'm very immature I guess um, and sensitive but uh I just heard him say something about me while I was supposed to be doing my lines in this audition that he was auditioning for. And I was like, you got something to say? Like right in the middle of my audition or whatever, just about to slap him. And then uh, Rogan was talking about how funny I was on there. And he, uh, on the podcast one day, and Shaw was like, oh, yeah, he's a real funny guy. Is he still alive or what? Or is he bankrupt now? Or like saying stuff like just always saying, um, oh, he's always got something to say about me, but never in person. He finds he can only focus on his shoes in person, his Gucci boots, most likely. Uh, in person, whenever I'm around, he just stares down and won't say anything. But uh, Plus, who wants to see, like, there's been guys struggling for years that are genuinely funny to make it in comedy, and then uh, the unfunniest person I've ever met in my life has a Showtime special. It just doesn't make sense. So, I guess I'm a hater, if you want to know the truth. But... <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, he's already blocked me. He blocked me on, it's funny, he, he's so dumb, I trash him on Twitter all the time, and he blocked me on Instagram. Oh. Like, I've never even <laughs> been on his Instagram page. I've never said anything on his Instagram page. I've never said anything to his wife. I wouldn't do that. I would say stuff about her, but I wouldn't say it to her. And then, um, yeah, then he blocked me on Instagram to really show me, but not on Twitter. So, I don't know. So, is that it? Is that any, any more jokes? That was, yeah, that's all I had, man. The, right. other one, like I said, the other one, it was kind of racist, so I changed my mind. Twice. It's all good. Give it up for Sean McCarthy, everybody. Sean McCarthy. Yeah, we'll see you next week, Sean. You're the best, brother. All right, man. You're see you. Thanks. Yeah. Yep. I love, I love your face, dude. That was the best. You're like, did I want to stay for this? I felt like you wanted to hold up a sign that was like, I don't agree with all of this material. <laughs> I know. I was. I felt like if I laughed at some of them, like it would be like bad. So it's I was okay. like, you can laugh at anything you want, Carla. <laughs> anything. You can't get mad at what people find funny. That's, you know. That's the thing. Carla, you look good. You look like you've been, uh, your chest, you have that line here. You know what I'm talking about? Go, go like this. Yeah. Muscle chest. Is, yeah. That, is that always there? I'm just, am I, I'm just a V-neck. Am I just seeing that? <laughs> Probably the V-neck, but I've been lifting a lot, uh, like, this uh, last couple of years and taking supplements. Be but... careful. Be careful with that. Come on. <laughs> 
Be careful with that. No, I think you look great. No, I'm not thinking like supplements. I'm no, I know. I'm like... saying even even supplements is, is what people keep thinking. <laughs> of course, everybody that gets popped is like, I just was, took a smoothie at my GNC, and then next thing you know, and I'm just like, I mean, I'm sure a lot of them are full of shit, but I do. No, I'm, I feel like a lot of them are full of shit, but I also only take third party tested uh, products. So my MHP, like they are informed choice, third tested. So like like almost 100%, like you're gonna get popped if you're taking a supplement third party tested. Even the vitamins I take are all third party tested. I don't take chances. I don't go to smoothie bar and put protein. I'm like careful. Good, good, good. Well, listen, Carla, right. thank you for coming on the show. I know I, I asked you a couple times, you're like, hey, I'm, I'm like, I'm having a comedy. You're like, I'm in fight camp, grr. And like, that, that's the text I get back. I was like, hey, you want to, I'm in my fight camp. I'm like, uh, the show's at Saturday at noon. I don't care, grr. you know? So like, I, I, but I get it. Like, that's, that's you and you need to focus and you can't have other crazy shit coming in your head. So I get yeah, it. Yeah, I think all my friends, like they kind of get it now. Like even like Ashley and everyone, like I didn't talk to them for like a month and they're like, hey, I know you're like, in fight mode but i miss you and i'm like thanks or like like nothing yeah. personal just my, no, I, my process you know but no i get it in thanks fact, for having me on post fight anytime in fact there are certain fighters like you and tyron woodley uh i think are the most because like woodley like a month out will be like two months out like he'll be like sorry man gotta focus and i'm like that's good it's when guys aren't focused but i'm like ah like people are tweeting me people, people like, i've had fighters text me like an hour before their fight like Hey, any good jokes for my opponent? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah that's never them. worked out well either. That's never worked out well. No, I'm like, you're fighting them in an hour. I'm like, just, yeah. just I'm like, just win and focus, please. Like, that's uh, you don't worry about the jokes. The jokes are over. The jokes will be there. Dude, after the can fight. you like take over my account and just like roast Claudia? <laughs> yeah, yes, I can. That would be hilarious. Yeah, let me know. That would be. I, yeah, I'll, I'll give you some good Claudia jokes. I like Claudia though. It's hard to roast. <laughs> How, how's her English? Is it better or no? Uh, her English is good. Because I, I don't like roast people that don't speak English. I feel like I'm like I'm bullying them a little bit. You know, like I feel like I'm just not, you know, it's, it's not, I don't, I only like people that they can, you know, verbally come back at me. If someone doesn't speak yeah, English. Yeah, no, her English is good. We've actually had like Twitter wars like over the years because we have, our fights were like eight years in the making, like, or longer. So, you know. I tell you, we, we have a lot of history, so we've shocked each other before on Twitter. So her English is good enough to trash talk. No problem. I got you. I got. I got your back. I got your back. Well, well, thank you I for guess. coming on the show, Greg. Great seeing you, brother. Good to see you too. You guys take care. Have a good one. Bye. You're awesome.